This is the dynamic section of the spiral sequence. We're going to do a lot of balancing spirals and you'll see what that looks like. If it feels a little bit complicated, just watch it through the first time and then join in when you feel you've got it, okay? So let's get back to downward facing dog. And spreading the fingers. Once again, connecting the finger pads to the earth as well as the toe pads. So that it's not just the heels of the hands that are relying, um, taking all of the weight, right? So we start to distribute the weight evenly. Just checking in with that downward facing dog, with the back of the neck, the jaw. Remember, stillness is also buoyant. Uh, it doesn't get rigid. You should always try to find your pliability with the breath. A slight shift of weight. One more breath there. And then bend in the knees, looking in between the hands. Either step, walk, or jump if you like. Feet in between your hands. We're going to keep the feet hip distance apart though. And start with the knees slightly bent. Relax through the head and the neck and grab a hold of the elbows. And then just shifting weight from side to side, imagining from the tailbone to the crown of the head is like a pendulum. We just start to massage that deeper back line of the body, feeling the sensation from the soles of the feet through the backs of the ankles, the calves, the hamstrings, into the sit bones, the lower back, all the way up to the crown of the head. So keep checking in with the back of the neck. And if you feel a particular pulling sensation anywhere in the back of the knees or the sit bones of the lower back, all you have to do is back off of that. You know, bend the knees more, round the back a little bit, or grab a hold of your ankles. So a few more breaths, just finding a bit of space and seeing where you are with this forward bend. And then bringing it into neutral position and relaxing the arms completely. Just drop the weight of the head. Make sure you shift the weight evenly in the feet so that the toe pads make a connection, not just the heels of the hands. Swallow deeply to soften in the throat. One more breath there. And then as you inhale, lifting through the chest. And exhale, bend the knees slightly, hug the navel to the spine. Rolling up one vertebrae at a time. Come all the way up to standing. When you get to the top, just drop the shoulder blades back. Turn the palms forward. Scooping the air up and forward on your inhales. And as you exhale, hands in prayer position. In front of the heart. Close the eyes and let's take a few breaths here. Just allow all that information to reorganize itself in your body. In a moment of stillness. Check in with the breath, check in with the shoulders, the jaw, the eyes. And then on your next inhale, gently opening the eyes, let's bring the feet just a little bit closer together, but not all the way together. Release the hands as you inhale. Sit back for Utkatasana and reach the arms up so it's like a big beach ball you've got in between your hands. Try not to let the shoulders creep up around the ears. And a little pulsing of the sit bones dropping back and down. You want the sense that the sit bones are going behind the heels. You really have to hug the navel in so the transverse abdominis is really working. And then we're going to shift weight into the left foot to do what I call spiral dancer. So pick up the right leg, the right knee stays bent, twisting the elbow toward the left elbow towards the right knee. Remember, you want to keep a little bit buoyant here so that it doesn't get rigid. As you exhale, we're going into what I call spiral reach. You're stepping back long with that right leg, almost as if you're going into a lunge, but then the right elbow is reaching towards the outside of the left knee. Again, I'm not going to get stuck here. I'm not going for a prayer twist. I'm just finding that opening of that back, the wrapping of the rib cage around the spine. And then as you inhale, coming up, and turn your right toes to the side, pick up your left toes, bend your right knee, drop the hips, 
and reaching the arms up. I like to ground either my hands or the elbows through Virabhadrasana 4, a little pulsing here. Notice that the rotation in the left leg is allowed to just open and soften as much as it needs to. It's going to depend on your bone structure. Now we're going to put all of that into a flow. So as you inhale, push off of that right leg, hug the navel to the spine, exhale, go back to your spiral reach. Good. Now I've got to push off of this right leg, shift weight, come back up, spiral dancer. Everything gets nice and bouncy as you exhale, step back, spiral reach, and then using that recoil from the left leg, push back off to Virabhadrasana 4. And again, inhale, coming up, think about that foot pushing off, connecting to the navel to get that spiral. The energy is going to continue forward. Find that balance. If you need to tap your back foot down a few times to find the balance, that's fine. Keep thinking about that connection through the pelvic floor gently, through the lower abdominals gently, and using the feet as a mechanism to connect to that stability. One last time, spiral reach first, and then shift off of that back leg. Find your spiral dancer. Back to spiral reach. And then back to Virabhadrasana 4. Hold it here, place the hands down on the floor, and just a little pulse here a few times. And then place the left foot down with the toes facing towards the side, and go into a classic pyramid. So we did this in the last section. Now we're going to fold the right arm behind the back, grab the left inner thigh, lift the chest up. And again, feel free to shift weight in the hips. To find the length in the spine, how do I grow the spine away from the sit bones? Softening in the jaw. And then as you exhale, release the right hand back down to the floor. Turn the fingers and the toes to face the back of the mat. Place the hands flat, step back to downward facing dog. Waving vinyasa. So lifting the heels round to the back. Shoulders coming over the wrist. The exhale lowers the pelvis. Lift the chest through. Take a few breaths here, just getting buoyant in the upward facing dog. And then connect your hands to your navel. To exhale, push the hands forward. Send the sit bones back to downward facing dog. And once again, if you need to still play, if you're still looking for space in the legs, Keep your downward facing dog a bit more mobile. And if you're ready to move into stillness with your downward facing dog, remember it doesn't mean rigid. It doesn't mean locked or fixed. It's still pliable and it can still be a negotiation. One more breath there. And then we're moving back to standing. So bend the knees, look in between your feet or in between your hands would be better. And then step or jump your feet in between your hands. Bend the knees, hug the navel to the spine like a rag doll, rolling up one vertebrae at a time, coming all the way up. Hug the shoulder blades down the back, scoop the air forward all the way up. And exhaling hands to prayer position. Take a deep breath in and out. We're going back to Utkatasana. So bend in the knees, sit bones going back behind the heels, reaching up, but making sure your shoulders aren't part of the process. They're going to try to hug down as the heart lifts. So keep the tops of the shoulders soft. Now I'm thinking about moving that weight more into the right leg, lifting up for Spiral Dancer over the left side. So the right elbow is moving towards the left knee. And again, I need to have a little bit of pliability here. I don't want to lock out any of my joints. And then switching direction, lengthening that left leg back for our spiral reach. Again, I'm not concerned about getting this elbow beyond the knee. I'm concerned about that spiral through the back, lengthening all the way down to that back heel. I'm going to use the power of the right thigh to push off, change weight, 
fold it over the left leg, let the right toes lift, and again, I'm allowed to let this internally and externally rotate as much as it needs to. Either grabbing the hands or the elbows over the top of the head, this is Virabhadrasana 4. So let's link those three movements together a few times. As you inhale, push off of the left leg, shift weight into the right. Think about that back heel propelling that spiral. It's where it starts. And then I've got to keep making the energy move forward, coming up, spiral dancer. Exhale to shift it back to spiral reach. Inhale to come up. Exhale, Virabhadrasana 4. Inhale to push it back up. Change direction, spiraling around the right leg. When you're ready, shift the weight forward. Find that spiral coming from feet through the navel all the way to the connection of the elbow and the knee. Let's do it one more time. Stepping back long for the spiral reach. Pushing off the right leg. Virabhadrasana 4. Inhale to push it back up. Exhale, spiral reach. Shifting the weight back, taking as much time as you need to. Imagine you're moving through water. Imagine you're doing Tai Chi underwater. So you really start to feel what muscles you need to make it flow and what ones you can turn off so it no longer is rigid. Your next fear of drops to the floor, just stay there. Let's place the hands down on the floor. Just a little pulse here, letting this femur bone, your thigh bone, just soften to its natural rotation. And then inhale, turn the right toes towards the side. Keep the right hand flat on the floor. Inhale, reach up to the sky with the left arm. Classic pyramid, fold the left hand behind the back. See if you can find your inner thigh, or just grabbing a hold of your leggings or your t-shirt. Lifting the chest, and again, make sure it's not rigid. Where can you find a bit more space? Where can you find a little bit more power? And then on your next exhale, releasing the left hand back to the floor. Turning the fingers and the toes to face back to the front of the mat. Place the hands down, step back to downward facing dog. Moving through our waving vinyasa as you inhale, lifting the heels round the back. Moving everything forward, exhale, lower the pelvis. Lift the chest through, once again, find a nice, pliable, upward facing dog. Maybe circling the head, the jaw, discovering where your feet need to be. You might want to um, put the tops of the feet on the floor, that's fine. And then when you're ready, push the hands forward, navel goes back to downward facing dog. And just taking a few breaths here. Remember, get that sense that you arrive in downward facing dog as, a fo as opposed to fixing the body into a particular shape. Find the sense of unfolding so nothing gets rigid. On your next exhale, bend your knees, look between your hands, and once again, step, hop, Jump your feet in between your hands, soften the knees, relax the neck and the jaw. Inhaling, rolling up one vertebrae at a time. The shoulders soften down the back, the palms scoop up. Find prayer position with your hands, bring it down right to the heart. And once again, close your eyes, swallow deeply, tune into the breath, and just take a moment here. And listen to what it feels like in your body now. One more breath there. As you inhale, open the eyes. Releasing the hands, doing round two now, sitting back into Utkatasana. Once again, get that sensation, your arms begin way down at your navel. That's where that power comes through the side of the body, through the shoulder, not from the shoulder. Shifting weight into your left leg, finding your spiral dancer with the right knee and the left elbow moving towards meeting. Take a breath in here, and as you exhale, shift back 
to the spiral reach. Try to find that nice quality of moving. As you shift weight, moving into Virabhadrasana, four. Inhale, use the recoil, push off of that right leg, and find that spiral. Navel hugging in. Shift the weight forward, taking your time. Find your spiral dancer. Exhale, find your spiral reach. Every once in a while, just as you're flowing through this, check in with your shoulders. See if you can relax them just a little bit more. One more time, pushing off, spiraling over the left leg. Finding that one-legged balance, but letting it be buoyant. Don't get fixed on what it should look like. Just find the spiral from inside. Find the spiral over the left leg. And then coming to your rear of dressing four. Once again, we're going to hold it here. Place the hands down. Just pulsing for one or two breaths. And this time, we're going to turn to face the fingers and the toes towards the back of the mat. Keep your right knee bent this time. And left hand to the floor, slightly wider than your left shoulder. Reaching up to the sky with the right arm. So nice open twist, similar to what we did earlier on. And then turning onto the outside edge of the left foot, we're just going to slide, making a circle, slide that right foot back, but keep it going all the way through till you get to wild thing. If you've got wrist issues, you can always come down to your forearm. Just to give the back something different to do, engage through the upper back, open up through the front, and then put Basically, tracing that same line all the way back around and bringing your foot right back where it was. Moving the hands back underneath the shoulders, step the left foot a little bit closer to the right. We're just going to have a conversation with the right hamstring, a variation of Pajvatumasana. I like to get the back heel square to the front heel, so I'm not turning the feet out. And I can bend both knees and then straighten, or if I'm really comfortable in my hamstrings, keep the legs straight and just shift forward and back. Checking in with the back of the neck to make sure that I'm not creating any extra tension in the back line of the body. When you're ready for stillness, finding it, if you want to place your hands flat, that's great. If you have finger wrist issues, hands and fists, or of course, if your hamstring is quite tight, hands on the block, and you can always keep the knees slightly bent. One more breath there. And we're moving back to a balance. So we're going to shift weight into the right leg, bending the right knee, and step the left foot a little bit further forward. Both knees are bent. And I'm going to come up through a variation of Virabhadrasana 3, but I'm going to keep my right leg bent opening up my left hip a little bit. I know that breaks some rules for some of you, but it's okay. And then collect the energy in the pelvis to unfold. Again, I want to stay buoyant. I want to keep both knees bent. And I'm moving towards a really soft Garudasana, wrapping the left leg over the right leg. And then I'm going to continue that spiral, wrapping the left arm over the right arm. And once again, don't get fixed. See if you can get some more pliability in that bottom ankle so that it doesn't start to burn. One more breath there. And then as you exhale, unfold. And be just as interested in the process of unfolding as much as you did as folding up. And I'm going to move back through a nice, relaxed Virabhadrasana 3. And then just place the left foot down both hands down, and float the right leg up to a three-legged dog, bending the left knee. So remember, I want to use buoyancy in my supporting legs always. Just a couple breaths there, and then as you exhale, bring the right knee in towards your nose, but we're going to place the leg in pigeon. Inch the left leg a little bit further back, and just Finding a bit of movement in the pelvis. I'm going to work with a spiral in the pigeon. So first of all, I just want to have that conversation with the hip. And when we do balances, 
We use a lot of the glute medius, glute maximus, and the piriformis. So now I'm going to give, giving it an opportunity to have a bit of a break and to give it a bit of a stretch. When you're ready, release the back foot. Walk the hands forward, but I'm working towards a spiral in my pigeon. So I'm going to start with the left forearm down and just reach up to the sky with the right arm and place it down. Right forearm down and left arm up. So I'm just changing the relationship of the spine to the pelvis to get that sense of spiraling into the hip opener and then spiraling away from it. Allowing the hips to shift weight. Remember, I don't want to keep rigid with my bone structure. I need to give it a bit of wiggle room so I'm not putting any of my joints or my ligaments in danger. And then when you're ready, just coming to rest in stillness. If you're comfortable, you can place the forehead on the hands. If you'd like to keep it in the spiral, if you're still finding that interesting, and placing the left forearm parallel to the um, front edge of your mat. Press the right hand on the right thigh and find that spiral deeper inside. If it's comfortable, you can reach behind you and find your right big toe joint, lifting the chest. If that's really comfortable, you can place the shoulder down on the floor and just add a little bit more depth to the spiral itself. Just experiment with things. If they feel like they're too much, you just go back to something that's a little bit more manageable. One more breath there. And then slowly releasing, untwisting if you're in the spiral, placing the hands underneath the shoulders, tuck the back toes under and back to downward facing dog. Moving into our waving vinyasa. So lifting the heels up, rounding the back, sending that energy forward, lowering the pelvis, lifting the chest. Once again, finding a nice bit of pliability in your upward facing dog. And then as you exhale, hugging the navel in, move back to downward facing dog. Take a few breaths in downward facing dog once again. If you arrive in stillness, make sure it doesn't feel fixed or rigid. And if you feel you need to explore different ranges of motion from the structure of downward facing dog, explore away. Remember, this is your practice, it's your body. One more breath. And then bend the knees, looking in between the hands. Once again, you can step, you can walk, you can jump your feet in between the hands. Soften the knees, round in the back, rolling up one vertebrae at a time. When you get all the way upright, Soften the shoulders down the back, turn the palms forward, scoop the air up. And as you exhale, bring the hands in prayer position in front of the heart, close the eyes. Once again, just take some time, let that information reorganize itself in your body. And you can feel it, you can feel the conversations that are happening between the fascia, the muscles, the nervous system, the vascular system. You just get to observe it. And exhale, release the arms, turn the palms forward. We're going back to that nice buoyant Utkatasana. So just find that light little balance, make sure the shoulders are soft, but the line of movement is all the way down to the navel. Shifting into the right leg, we're starting our spiral dancer on the left side. So we get that connection, feet through to the navel, and then unspiral it to wrap it around the other way, 
Spiral reach over the right leg. Use that recoil, push off the right leg, lift up, grab the hands and the arms, Virabhadrasana four over the left. Inhale, lifting it back up, shifting weight, and exhale, spiral reaching over the right leg. Shifting back forward, find that spiral dancer again. Don't get fixed on what the final aspect is. Just feel your way through the movements. Try to make it nice, slow, fluid and controlled. Let's do one more round. And you'll start to feel how you recruit the muscles that you need and therefore you can soften the ones that you don't need. In any given moment, they're always changing. They're changing hands. Who's got a hold of the leg? Who's got control of the core? Who's got control of the arms? Everything's always changing as you move. From this Virabhadrasana to the four, once again, let's place the hands down. Have a little pulse here for a few breaths. And then turning to face back to the front of the mat. We're going to keep the left knee bent once again, and pressing through the right heel to begin with. Place the right hand a little bit wider than the right shoulder, and reaching up towards the ceiling with the left arm. So once again, we're in this nice open spiral, but I'm not going to get fixed. I'm going to talk about the relationship between the feet, the legs, the navel, the spine, lifting up and opening. And then, just changing it towards our wild thing. Roll onto the outside edge of the right foot, making a big circle with the left leg all the way around. Engaging through the upper back, pressing down into the legs to engage through the thighs, opening up through the front of the body, breathing into the heart. One more breath there. And then as you exhale, just trace that same line all the way back around to your foot's where it was before. Stepping the right foot a little bit closer to the left foot. Now I'm having the conversation with the left hamstring. And once again, bending and straightening is a great way to kind of engage and release, thinking about the back of the neck, the relationship of the sit bones through the middle and the lower back. If you're really comfortable in your hamstrings, just shift weight forward and back. Get pliable with the feet, the ankles. So much information of what's going on in your hamstrings starts in the sole of your foot. Right? It doesn't start here in the Achilles tendon. It goes all the way to the toes. So the more you can bring that into your investigation, the more you'll start to send messages up the back of the leg to release. And then when you're ready for stillness, again, it's not rigid, it's not fixed. It can be pliable, and at any point you need to renegotiate. Don't push through pain. It's such a, um, a silly idea to think, oh, you know, it's a little bit of pain, so maybe I should just work with it. No. You wouldn't do that if somebody came up and slapped you in the face. <laughs> So we need to negotiate around it so that we're not overburdening any one part of the body. All right, we're moving towards a very nice, easy Virabhadrasana three. So taking the hands forward, bending the left leg, and start to float that right leg up. Make sure it's got some energy in it. It's harder to lift dead weight. And anything you want to do with the arms here, as long as they're light, a little lift in that outside hip so that you're not you're not trying to square the hips. And then we're unfolding. If you need to put the back foot down for a moment, go for it. Otherwise, getting ready to wrap everything up into our Garudasana. The right leg starts to fold over the left leg. And then the right arm starts to fold over the left arm. And you're taking your time, right? There's no rush. A little bit of bounce, a little bit of wobble. Talking to that foot that's now so supportive. Softening the jaw. And then the process of unfolding is just as interesting as getting into it, right? Find your way out of it. Tilt the torso forward, stretch the leg back so you've got a nice long bit of Virabhadrasana 3 before you put that foot down. 
Place the hands down, and then three-legged dog floating the left leg up in the air. And it needs a break, right? So we're gonna give it that break, but we're also gonna give it a stretch. A few pulses in the right leg. And then on your next exhale, bringing that left knee towards the nose, but opening up slightly to the side for pigeon, and inching your right foot away a little bit. And before you commit, just going straight into your forward bend, investigate the other ranges of motion. A little bit of side, forward, back, kind of talking to that psoas a little bit. Looking over the shoulder, you'll start to feel the myofascial connection, any time you change the relationship of the head and the jaw to the rest of the body, you start to really feel the lines as they pass through the chest, the rib cage, all the way down to the psoas of the hip. And then placing the back knee on the floor, release the back foot. Once again, just playing with a few spirals. We'll start with the right forearm down, Inhale, reaching up with the left. Exhale, left forearm down. Inhale, reaching up with the right. Right forearm down. Reaching up with the left. And then one more time. Each side. Once again, allow the sh hips to shift. Let your spine respond in a natural way, not a fixed way. And then when you're ready, decide where you're going to go with this. So first and foremost, it might just be resting with your forearms on the floor, and that's as far as you want to go. It might mean the forehead to the hands is where, that's as far as you need to be. If you're feeling nice in those spirals, you're going to keep the right forearm down this time. And taking the left hand, reaching behind you, try to find your left toes. Lift up out of that, lift the chest. Make sure the head, the neck, and the jaw have some space to breathe. And this might be enough for you, but if it does feel really comfortable, then you're placing the right shoulder on the floor, moving that a little bit deeper, breathing into the back of the ribs, breathing into the chest. Just taking a few more breaths there. And then on your next exhale, if you've got a hold of that foot, release it. And coming out of the spiral, placing the hands down underneath the shoulders. Tuck the back toes under. Connect that sensation, hands to navel to step back to downward facing dog, and one last waving vinyasa, rounding in the back as the shoulders come forward, get that sense of dragging the hands back to send the chest forward, push the heels back, and just enjoying a nice sense of back bending for a few breaths, and then when you're ready, push the hands forward to send the navel back to downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in and out here. And then bringing the knees down to the floor. Sit back on your heels and rest in child's pose.